How y'all doing? Now today, I'm super excited to show y'all my computer desk. This thing came out looking great, exactly how I intended. Now, I'm not just going to show you all the good parts like everybody else. No, I'm going to show you all the mistakes that I made so that you don't make them. By the end of this video, you're going to have the knowledge and be ready to complete this project on your own, no matter what level woodworking skills you have. So without further ado, let's get right to it. I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, step one is to cut these two by sixes down. I cut them down to six feet each. Uh, I had five of them total to make a nice big wide table. Now it's time to sand. Now I started with 60 grit, then worked my way from 60 to 120, 180, then 220. I had to work on these boards a lot. They weren't in great shape. They were cheap, 350 each, but I had to go through a bunch of them, a whole rack of them to find some good grain and some ones that were nice and straight. All right, now on the sides, I just did it by hand. I didn't want to mess that factory cut up too much. I just wanted to kind of get the edges looking decent. If you use the power sander, it's going to take too much off. All right, now it's time for the Craig jig. Now this was a really convenient thing. This thing is going to have me building so much stuff. I'm telling you, you need to buy it. I've spent about 40 bucks on it. Um, I want to get the one that's 100. I think it'll be a little bit easier, but hey, we working on the budget, so we do what we gotta do. I started about three inches from the end because I knew I was gonna cut off some of it and then drilled holes in every 10 inches apart. I did the same on all four boards. You don't have to do the fifth one because you're actually drilling into it, so that's about it for that. Now we're ready to assemble these. So I just wiped it down with a tack cloth and put some glue on it. Put glue on both of the boards that I was sticking together and just use my little rockler brush to kind of wipe it smooth on there. Now before we screw this in, we want to get some scrap pieces of wood and clamp it down real tight right where you're about to screw it in. Now what this is going to do is it's going to push those two boards close to each other Perfect. so if it's a little bit wonky or something it's gonna pull it tight so that you got a nice straight top I mean, you ain't got no big big waves in it now you want to start on one end screw this side in and then you want to go to the other end and screw that side in before you know you go down the line don't do that uh, I found that this is the best way to kind of keep everything straight and in line and then now, now you can just go down the line. You got both ends done, and then you just go down the line. Now I had to use some two by fours once this kind of started getting a little bit long, but the two by fours worked it really good. And I did the same thing, just went down the line with it. Board after board, it's the same thing over and over, it's easy. This part was the easiest part, I probably did the whole thing. There we have it, a nice flat tabletop. Now you can make a kitchen table out of this if you wanted to, it's the same process. Now you see on there, they all look nice and even. It's the only four boards we had to screw in, 10 inches apart, looks good. Nice and straight, nice and sturdy. Now here, what I'm trying to measure out is where I'm gonna put the legs at. Now I wanted the legs to overlap all five boards so it's nice and sturdy, but not all the way to the end because I want it sleek and stylish. So the measurements came out to 29 inches for the vertical pieces of the leg and 17 inches for the horizontal pieces of the leg. Now you want to cut the board and always double check everything you do just to make sure it's nice and perfect. And there we go. We got four 29 inch boards and four 17 inch boards. This is gonna be our legs. Just like the last boards for the top, we're just gonna sand these down. Start with 60, then work your way up to 120, 180, 220. And do this with all the boards. Now here I marked out where we're going to drill the Craig holes. Do this on all four to 17 inch boards. This is gonna be the top and the bottom to the legs. Now we're just gonna drill it out nice and easy on all four boards. 
Now before I put the legs on, I wanted to cut a little bit of the top off. It was a little bit too long, and also I wanted to make sure that it was perfectly straight on each end. The final measurement for the top came out to 66 inches. Now we're ready to assemble these legs. What I did is use a wood clamp to hold this together and then use my speed square to check it and make some moves if I needed to move it around to make sure that it was nice and straight. Now you want your holes to be facing out. This is gonna be either the top or bottom of your legs, so you're not gonna be able to see that. So the inside of it, you wanna make sure it is nice and clean and the top and bottom is gonna have the holes in it. Just repeat the same steps for both of the legs, and there we go. Now you see it up, perfect. Now here, I'm measuring out the position of the legs. I want to make sure that it's nice and straight. We don't want no crooked legs now. So what I did is measured five inches from the end of the table to the start of where the legs are gonna be. So I made a guideline right here, just to make sure when I'm moving this leg around that I know exactly where it needs to be and I ain't no second guessing. Now here I measured just under four inches from either the front or the back. You see I got the little line right there to line it up perfect. And these are the holes we're gonna use to screw it down. Now we're just gonna put some pilot holes in there. It's always best to put pilot holes in first just so everything matches up right and it goes in nice and smooth. I'm ready to drill these in. Now, I didn't add any glue at the bottom of this. The reason being is it's a big desk, so when I move, if I need to move it and it won't fit through a door or something, I can always detach these legs and keep it moving. Now, this is the apron and or brace. Uh, this is what's gonna keep your legs sturdy so they ain't wobbling back and forth. I just made a rough guess. I had to take a couple cuts at it just to get it nice and perfect, get it nice and snug, but we got it. Now it's time to drill some more holes in there with this Craig jig. I did two holes on each side. Now here I went a little bit overboard. I drilled holes about every two inches. Now you really only need it about every six inches. So when I went to go screw this in, I screwed in every other hole. Now we're ready to screw it in. What I did here is use my wood clamp to hold it in place and just screw it right in, simple. Same thing on the other side. And here you can see I did it every other hole. Voila, now we're done with the assembly. Time for the next step. Now before we put our stain or our lacquer on here, we wanna take all these little dents out of here. These are gonna make your project look ugly and sh not it. But it's real simple. All you need is a little piece of cloth, an iron, and a little bit of water. Now turn your iron up to the hottest setting. It usually says cotton. Take your water out, drop you a little bit of water into the little dent, and let it sit for a couple of seconds, not too long. Put your cloth over it and start ironing. Now when you're ironing, don't just hold it down in one spot. You wanna kinda keep it moving around a little bit. Then check it. If it's not perfect yet, put it back down, iron a little more. And boom. Now you can see, well actually you can't see, it's hard, it took me a second to even figure out where the original spot really was. That's how good this little trick worked. Now we're ready for the final sanding. Now I used 220 grip. I just wanted to get everything nice and smooth and nice and even before we started to put the stain or anything else on there. Same thing with the legs. Hit it with that 220 for one last time to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Now we ready for the fun part. Let's get these nice colors on here. 
This one's called Tantalizing Till. I love that name. This one, Bayou Blue. Last but not least, Rendezvous. Don't look like it, but that's what it actually says. <laughs> now we got our little bowls to pour this all in. We want a really nice paintbrush, some painter's tape, a tack cloth, and a big towel. Oh yeah, don't forget the big old bucket of water. Now I roughly marked out the middle of the table with this painter's tape, just so I didn't go too far over. Um, the way I'm doing it, it don't matter that much, but I want to make it just perfectly imperfect. Now dealing with this paint slash dye, you want to be a little easy with it. You don't want to just glob it on there and just have a bunch of it just sitting there on the wood. That plus some of these sun rays out here is gonna have your wood grain raising and we don't want that right now. So be a little patient with this. Uh, wipe some out and make sure that it's not globbed on there. You wanna get it on there and wipe it around real quick. Now this was the most fun and creative part of it all. Man, I felt like I was painting a big old mural on my desk. Felt great, it looked even better. I couldn't be more happier with it. When you get close to the two colors, you're gonna wanna pull the light into the dark. You always wanna blend light to dark. You might have to use a little bit of blue to kinda go back and forth with it, but always blend light to dark. So this is what it looked like after the first coat. Now it looks good, but it's not popping. It's not getting those deep, rich colors that you want. So you're gonna need to put a couple uh, coats on this to get it nice and deep and rich. Now you look right here, you see a bunch of different greens, a bunch of different blues and purples. Now I let this sit for about two days before I attempted to put some lacquer on there. Now I'm just wiping it off with a tack cloth. Now this right here, this is some bullshit. Do not buy this. This was the worst idea I've ever had. I sprayed over two cans. I put about 10 plus coats of this on there and it still didn't help or work at all. You heard of orange peel? No, this is concrete peel. This felt like I was rubbing my finger on the concrete. It was horrible. So guess what happened? When I tried to wet sand it, this is what happened. Now, this is the first time I've ever used lacquer or anything, so I just went ahead and tried it just to see what happened. And this is what happened. That's a little drip from the can. It dripped on there and ruined it. Now, painting this in the sun, I don't think helped, and it might have raised the grain a little bit, but still, it should have done a lot better than this. So guess what I had to do? Yeah, that's right, start over. Now, this broke my heart, but you know what? We ain't gonna cry over spilled milk. We gonna do what we gotta do and get it done and get it done right. So what I had to do is make a paint booth. Now this ain't a perfect paint booth, but it worked out perfectly for me. Kept the sun off of my desk. It kept the little particles you know, from getting on there. This actually helped a lot. 
The only problem was I didn't have enough room to actually film and that spray sprayed everywhere. So I ain't wanted to mess my camera up or do nothing like that. So unfortunately I don't have film of that. Now this spray gun, this is what you need in your life. This thing works perfect. It's called the Home Right Finish Max Super, and it really is super, I tell you that. I use this to spray these legs and that little brace, and also to spray the top of the desk. Now spraying that lacquer, I was a little scared after that last debacle, um, but this thing worked perfect. It laid it on there nice and thick and exactly what I needed. Now we ready for the wet sand. I use this 3M wet dry thousand grit to start with, and just slowly put it on there. Now last time it kind of went through the, the lacquer. So this time I kind of took it slow. Started off just running it over a little bit, not doing too much at a time, wiping it off, getting the feel of it and seeing how it felt so you can see what it actually has done. You want it all to feel the same. Now if it doesn't feel the same, running back over with that thousand grit till it all feels the same, then move up to 2000 grit, same thing with that. Now we ready to polish. Now I use this little furry polishing pad. It hooked onto my orbital sander uh, with, with Velcro basically hook and loop. And I used the 3M rubbing compound and just blotted it everywhere. You don't want to start with just one big glob of it on one spot. You want to spread it around so it's nice and even everywhere. Then you just want to keep it moving. You never want to keep it staying at one spot. You want to keep it moving. Now I want you to pay attention to the left side of the screen. You're gonna start seeing that little line right there slowly get more and more definition. You're gonna start seeing them shadows. That's when you're getting that good glass finish on there. Yeah, there you go, you see it now. It's starting to pop now. Now you see that line really defined and really bright, perfect. Now here's where I messed up. When you're polishing, you don't want to do a lot at once. You want to do little by little, not this. But hey, I had a bright idea. Let's just do it all at once, it'll be done quicker. But no, don't do that. Because if you do, you're going to end up with something really dull, just like this, and you're going to be buffing it for hours. Now if you do it right, this is what it's going to look like. You see that mirror finish? You see that wet wetness? It looked like I just spilled a bucket of water on it. Now this was the scariest part of it all. After I done got it looking perfect now, I had to drill big holes into it. Hey, but we gotta push on and get it done and get it done right. So this is the hole for uh, the wireless charging. So it's simple, I put a little painter's tape on there and drilled it out. Now those little white pieces of paper, uh, that's just so I could get an idea of where things were gonna be on my desk and where I needed this to go. The saw hole I had for this wasn't big enough, so I had to use the Dremel tool just to get it nice and perfect. This one was super easy. It was a two inch hole. This is so I can fit all the cords in the back and keep them nice and organized. Now this one was where it was hard. This is for the cup holder but I ain't have no hole saw big enough for it. So I had to use the rotary tool and just take out a little bit of it. But it was a little bit nerve wracking because that lip on that cup holder wasn't much. So just do little by little. Don't, don't try to do too much at once. And there we have it, nice and tight. Now these LEDs was so easy to install, the caveman could do it. I'm telling you, it was just peel and stick, like a big sticker. This is the back of the desk. So I got it facing towards the wall. All the other sides, I had it facing towards the ground, as you see here. And then we got this little nice little secret button right underneath the front of the desk. So it's nice and accessible. And this is some nice LEDs. It even connects to your Google or Alexa. Now I'm a perfectionist, so I can't leave this look like this. This is that rubbing compound that just didn't rub out. This is really what it should look like. Now, if you have a table saw, you ain't gonna run into this problem because you can make it seamless, but I don't. So what I had to do is rub some of this stain slash dye in there, wipe it off, and boom. Same thing with these knots. Some of them didn't fill out perfect, so just fill them in a little bit, and it's gonna match, and it's gonna look right. Woo, 
finally done. Now all that hard work paid off. I love to see this in the end. This thing is looking so good. It's above and beyond what I even thought it could be. Now you can do the same thing. It ain't that hard. Look at that shine though. Whew. Look like you staring at a lake or something, huh? You can see nothing but reflection. Now I feel like this cup holder is essential. You do not want to be spilling no water on your expensive equipment. And on the other side, we got this wireless charger. This is perfect. Just drop it on there and you good. Now let's not forget about these LEDs. These boys is flicking. I'm telling you, these things got so many options, I can't even show you, but they bright, they right, and you need them. Appreciate it.